that. Um, there are still challenges, and it's important I portray these challenges as positively I, as I can, because I'm a great believer in, in bulk transport. The new challenges, I would have to say, is in the broadest broadest heading, heading are most related to cost. And cost, I'm talking about in terms of preparation of the wine, i.e. loading speed, filtration, and some changes in winemaking styles. I'll come back to the winemaking styles in a minute, but talk first about the actual um, filtration and speed of loading. All these things are actually interrelated because if you look at data in terms of wine, wines are gradually getting sweeter. A number of red wines, you may or may not be aware, are often over five grams per litre sugar. Now, we have actually seen some of these wines re-ferment in a flexi. We get called on to see the industry's problems and challenges. And in order to ensure that bulk wine is transported wherever it's transported to without any problems, you need to ensure that that wine is as devoid of microorganisms as it possibly can. And of course, if you sterile filter, you're going to reduce the flow rate unless you have a number of cartridges in line. And unless, but unless you do sterile filter, um, you will find some, some, some yeast uh, in the end product. And never underestimate what yeast can do. We've actually seen, witnessed flexes which have arrived in the UK fermenting less than 10 grams per litre, some around 5 grams per litre, and building up, in, up enough pressure for the flexes to enlarge enough because they're a sealed bag, and they're large enough to actually push the metal sides of the container out. So you have a very considerable pressure inside there. And again, from other work we have performed, as I mentioned, seeing some of the industry's problems and how powerful some of these yeast are, I'm talking about bottled goods now. And again, another occasion I will never forget is a batch of vintage port, 20% ABV, re-fermenting in bottle. So if it's able to re-ferment at 20, it is certainly going to ferment at 14% uh, with a bit of sugar. So quite staggering that this particular yeast strain could ferment something that alcoholic. So never underestimate the bugs. I mentioned here changes in enological practices. Now, what do I mean by changes in enological practices? If we look at data, and one of the factors I like to look at in terms of wines of the world, and we're a very privileged position to see many, many wines in the world, something like around 5,000 per year, so we perform some data crunching so we can look at trends. And one of the trends we're noticing at the moment, not only in bottled goods, but in bulk goods as well, is a gradual reduction in free SO2. Not a problem per se, but if you have a very resistant yeast strain in there, it's more liable to ferment. I mentioned earlier about the, um, the, about the, 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 the sugar. Sugar is another factor which will enable that, and that there are a couple more as well, which hopefully I'm not getting too techy here. Um, but if you look at the pH of the wine and the total acidity of the wine, pH is gradually increasing in many areas of the world. So what happens with the increasing pH? You, get, you have an equilibrium between your free and your bound SO2. If you've got a wine with a high pH, for the same amount of sulfur you add to it, which can act to help inhibit re-fermentation, you will get less free, free SO2, so that's less inhibition. Um, I hope I've got that across to a number of you in the audience, but it's looking at the product holistically. So this combination of um, higher sugar, some filtration problems, uh, looking at the pH, it's important to look at the wine as a whole to make sure that what you're shipping is uh, as stable as it possibly can be. There are 
a couple of other products which, um, again, a number of times, a, a, one of our clients on receipt of a bulk wine would call us and say, oh, Jeff, we've got a filtration problem. Um, it, this wine fails our filtration index testing. What's going on? And, of course, during, in winemaking, there are a, a number of perfectly legal and perfectly good additives which you can use, one being gum arabic, which will impact on filtration. Another is carboxymethyl cellulose, CMC, which is used a great deal. Um, and one which has recently been approved by the OIV, which is potassium polyaspartate, which has a similar mode of action in terms of uh, inhibiting tartrate formation as wine. Now, all these are uh, compounds which are added to wine and increase in the broadest term, increase the molecular structure of the wine so it makes it more difficult to filter. But the problem is that if you then pre-filter that wine before you bottle it, you're taking that product out of the wine. <laughs> so uh, again, something to be very uh, wary of when, you're, when you're, um, you're, you're shipping bulk wine with specs.